Hi everybody, welcome again to another program of Yeshiva Classroom and uh, we hope uh, we uh, can present a uh, enjoyable program to you. You know, uh, one concept that we have to keep in mind is that everything is uh, controlled by God. All our actions that we do are controlled by God. And let me go into that subject a little bit by saying, you know, the first commandment. Uh, this is where we learn it out from, uh, of the Ten Commandments. Basically, we're, we're given uh, the Bible, the Jewish Bible, the Torah, a.k.a. Torah, Old Testament to the Gentile. We only have one Bible, and that's the Torah, the Jewish Bible. Uh, other uh, ideologies want to pick up and use uh, it as a restaurant and pick and choose whatever they feel is important. Uh, the so-called uh, denominations in Judaism, there's no such thing as a denomination. They pick and choose uh, what they want to emphasize and uh, what, how they want to rule. But a tangential, I don't want to get too tangential, but bear in mind that the first commandment is, I am the Lord your God, right? Your God, speaking to the Jewish people, because the Jewish people assembled, they assembled in front of Mount Sinai. And they heard uh, a, a surreal voice calling out to them the Ten Commandments. And, and the first one, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Why the extra words? Who brought you out of the land of Egypt. He involved himself at bringing us out of the land of Egypt. And we learn that... He, he involves himself. He, he involves himself in our day-to-day -day actions, in our day-to-day -day changes, the vicissitudes that we go through in our lifetime, the different changes. How do we find out we're here, and how do we get here? Uh, you know, you, you know, Joseph went all the way down to Egypt. And uh, he was brought there uh, unrealistically, uh, seemingly, uh, through the different uh, changes and, and acts that uh, happened to him, bringing him down uh, to uh, the uh, land of Egypt and becoming the viceroy uh, of uh, the entire country of Egypt. So it's significant that we have to realize that we, uh, our actions are controlled by God. But there is a little window of whereby we, as an individual, has the ability, unlike any other animal, uh, to choose between right and wrong. Uh, God breathed into the nostrils of man, and therefore, part of God was breathed into every nostril, every soul. So uh, that's what happened uh, to the Jewish people. They were given life, and they were given a soul, and they were to use those uh, uh, gifts to raise themselves and return the soul to God after hopingly they accomplish something in this world. Now we see the Jewish people uh, are all uh, involved in any aspect of uh, uh, culture or, or uh, living amongst uh, nations and, and power brokers, wherever they, they might be, you always find a Jew in that uh, industry, whether it's uh, sports, culture, music, science, I mean, just shot a, a rocket to the moon, right? Uh, you know, it's, it's a little Jewish nation of, of nine million, only seven million are Jews, the land of Israel. So we were given a soul, S-O-U-L, and that is very significant because, you know, how do we know we have a soul? 
if you give someone, a loved one, a present, and that loved one feels so happy that you gave it to him, that makes you feel happy. And what is that happiness that, that you feel that you gave over something to somebody? Is it your organ? Uh, what is it exactly? It is your soul, S-O-U-L, a soul which was breathed into man at his birth. And we are to return that soul to, to God after our demise. And hopefully we accomplish something good on this, on this short time that we have on this planet Earth. Uh, we have uh, uh, very significant chores that are so important uh, to make and to fix the world as a, as a better place uh, with Torah as our guide and to serve God. What does it mean serve God? God doesn't need anyone to serve Him, but it means that by keeping the commandments and directives and ordinances that uh, were uh, handed down in the Torah that were given to the Jewish people and which they accepted, they were serving God. And, and you look in Deuteronomy, uh, the chapter 4, 1, chapter 5, 1, uh, uh, tap, chapter uh, uh, 6, uh, 1, 6, 18, uh, chapter 7, 11, chapter 8, 2, all in Deuteronomy and in many more places, always exhorting the people to keep the commandments and live by them. And you say, well, how does it... Uh, why does God want me to do these things? I mean, it's like a father who brings up a child and he wants him to grow up in, a, in an outstanding, up, upstanding way. And that's how it is with our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not that we all believe in one God. We believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that's the, the God that we believe in. And He wants us to do the commandments because it is for our benefit. Uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 8, verse 16. I afflicted you and tested you so that it will be uh, for your benefit at the end, E-N-D. I afflicted you and tested you to keep the commandments so that it will be for your benefit at the end. Not only during the lifetime, do we become holy? Holy is a physical change that we're not aware of. Just like we can see a wire, we don't know whether it's a live wire or it's plugged in or it's not. Same thing with a pail of water. Is the water hot or cold? We can't really tell. And that's how, that's how it is in and uh, becoming holy. Holy. Definition would be, definition of holy would be the perfection in emulating God's ways. Perfection in emulating God's ways. And we see how God uh, was so kind to us uh, throughout the generations and uh, that he created man, he gave us all the uh, beautiful environmental uh, beauties. Uh, he gave us happiness of peace, prosperity, and uh, uh, solace, and family, and friends, and Torah, and mitzvahs. And we have to be thankful for all of these wonderful gifts. And and if we are true and, and follow uh, the, uh, those dictates, you know, we, we will be, we will merit to see the truth of uh, God's essence. But we can never see God's 
solely essence because it says in Exodus, look these uh, chapters up, Exodus chapter 32, uh, 32 2 or 30, 33 2, or, or 33 20, 33 20. No one can see me and live. No one can see me and live. So those ideologies which say that, look, we have a God, he's a man God, or this God, and we can see him, uh, that is, uh, goes against our teachings because we cannot see our God as much as we want to, as much as we search for him, we cannot see him. Why? Because it would take away the entire balance of why we're put on this earth. We're put on this earth to uh, strive for perfection or holiness. Holiness and perfection, the same thing. We're to strive for holiness and perfection. And if we, sh if we could see that God's truth, uh, His essence, uh, there would be no contest. We would all run to serve God and and be a follower of the covenant that we made with God. You know, it's, it's so easy. Uh, God wants people to follow in His ways and to realize that there is a God, uh, but He hides His presence, so to speak, so that one uh, will not automatically conclude that there is a God. Let me uh, explain, like we have in, um, uh, there's always a cause and effect. In other words, let me, let me explain it, like, you know, the story in Genesis of where uh, after the flood which destroyed all the people, uh, the a person in, in the name of Nimrod got the people together and said, let's build a tower to God, we're all one people, let's not disperse, and it, it was like a dictator. And it seems that that would be a good, good idea to, to worship God. But in that chapter when it talks about the Tower of Babel, it, it says that God came down to circumvent, to see the, uh, the uh, possible results that might happen with a one rule person, like a dictator. And we see throughout the generations all the dictators that have, have uh, enslaved and, and murdered and, and killed uh, in the name of peace, uh, even, you know, Hitler, Maximo, uh, Stalin, uh, 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 Mao Zedong in, in uh, China where he killed millions of people uh, just for uh, the fact that we want to unify quote unquote the people right? so God said you know we're going to break up the people even though there's going to be wars uh, between nations because they're going to have different languages and, and different races uh, that will uh, be better than having a dictator uh, like Stalin or Mao or uh, uh, Hitler come over and, and just kill at, at will. And, and therefore, he, uh, he created uh, those dormant genes in Adam, the first man, to come out and have different races like the blacks and the browns and the yellows and the uh, different uh, differences between the, the nations, not only in physical appearance, but, uh, but in, um, in language, right? So, in order to take away people's thoughts that it didn't happen by God, uh, man concludes that, well, Africans, those people that lived in that country, or black because they were, they were always outside and 
the sun was very strong by the equator and therefore that's how they got black because the environmental conditions so happened that way and because in Russia uh, the people didn't have that much sun and so uh, that's what we have a cause and effect so that it will let God off the hook so to speak so that he will not be uh, the uh, person who, who de de determines uh, of what happens in man's life, right? But actually, he is the one that puts us in to those situations, those vicissitudes, and those um, uh, trying situations uh, because uh, we have to use our free will. I just think that's a, a tremendous gift the ability to choose between right and wrong and all the situations that arise, all the situations that arise, and uh, we are to choose virtuously uh, by uh, those uh, uh, situations when they arise. And the same thing, you know, uh, a bloody day and a, and a drop of semen that produces a, uh, a, an individual, a fetus, and, and, and a human being. And with all the organs and uh, all the uh, wherewithal uh, in making him able to to exist. Now, did did that uh, possibly happen? That um, that the power in in all of those um, all of those uh, little egg and and semen. Uh, be able to produce that? Well, you know, it seems like that has a lot of power in those two units, but that's the full man and saying, that's how it happened, you know, cause and effect. And you see, uh, the child has a dimple and um, it looks just like his mother and or the, uh, uh, he has uh, uh, a, a, a identifying uh, feature, uh, whatever it might be, that is, resembles the father. So we, we leave God out of the equation, and, and God wants it to be left out of the equation partially, but He really wants us to understand that everything is from God, and we are to choose virtuously, and He put us in these situations so that we will be able to choose virtuously. Why do we need to be in all these situations? Why do we need to be in, in those uh, types of uh, environments? And the answer is because when we get to, to when we get to the next world, we will see that uh, that uh, all the situations that that occurred uh, happened, and uh, we. Uh, are to realize that they are uh, tremendous um, uh, accomplishments if, if they were and if we did choose virtuously and these will be chronicles that uh, will be uh, will be read to us and and we will we will learn all about those uh, uh, situations in in our in our in our lifetime we, we will learn about all those uh, situations that we went through and how uh, we uh, and, and how we uh, did them for good and how we accumulated merit. You know, all people, all, pe all righteous people of the world uh, earn the next world. All righteous people of the world earn the next world. But the Jewish people, all of them, even those that, that uh, or not so righteous are in the next world. There are basically, the Talmud says, there are two, two worlds. One world where all those Jews believe in the concept of the next world, and those Jews that are extra observant and all of heaven live. And they will go into a different area, uh, like uh, another uh, afterlife that is higher than uh, the or original afterlife for 
for all those uh, Jewish souls who believed in the concept. Now, if you don't believe in the concept, uh, you're, you're not going to get it. So we have to uh, implore our friends that uh, they uh, have to they have to uh, extol uh, to bring them back uh, into the fold, so to, so to speak, and that they should earn this eternal uh, happiness. The, the uh, next world where we will be able to pray and praise to God for, for uh, the uh, wonderful uh, all that we can encounter uh, when uh, we are in His presence. And, and that's, that's what we're here for, to, to try to have this world a place where we can accomplish a great deal. You know, d develop our character, um, uh, learn uh, uh, Torah, the, the God-given commandments and perform them excellence in, in carrying out all these uh, deeds uh, that we're commanded to do. And we will see them in color. That's why we're poured onto all these vicissitudes and we see, you know, everyone has such a story that they were born uh, non-observant and they were treated, uh, uh, mistreated as a youngster and they were abused and bullied and they finally found a way and, and these people will, will have their chronicles told and that's what we look forward uh, to uh, and, and we look forward to the fact that oh how lucky we are to be chosen uh, as uh, God's representative on, on this earth how lucky we are to be chosen as God's representative on this earth. And, and that's, that's our charge in life. And, and if you look, uh, this, is, this is what, what I'm telling you uh, is in black and white. Uh, I mean, if you look at, uh, write this down, Leviticus chapter, Leviticus chapter uh, 26, 1 to 14. If you do the commandments, you will have peace, prosperity and happiness, right? 1 to 14, the same thing in chapter 28. Chapter 28 in Devarim, Deuteronomy, sentence 1 to 14, you will have peace, prosperity and goodness if you follow and live by the commandments. And from 15 on, all the way to uh, 65, it, uh, it has many punishments that will occur to you in higher degradations uh, as you continue on your evil ways. And that's what we saw uh, in, in Europe. I mean, Europe is, is our, our, our great Jewish cemetery. Uh, the death... Uh, Plant, uh, uh, continent and we were given warnings and, and, and the rabbis will come out and say well we don't understand God's ways and we don't understand God's ways how can they be so blind and not to see that God's ways are so right out in the open right out in the open are they and look at, at chapter 2861 after, after 90 curses have gone by, each one more severe if they continue in the way, chapter 28, verse 68, 61 says, I will punish them with such an, a severe punishment that has never been written about in this book. That has never been written about in this book. That's 28, 61. And that's referring to the gas chambers. Well, we said, but there were a lot of good people there, are many rabbis and many, uh, and many observant religious people. Yes, but we're all responsible for one another. It's like a forest fire. When, when, a, fo when a fire is, it burns through the forest, everything is destroyed. The good plants, the bad plants, uh, everything, until it regenerates and starts growing again, like we have in America, like we have in Israel. 
like we have in, in uh, Chabad and all these organizations that reach out and try to, uh, to make sense uh, to those people who are not observant yet. Those Jews who are not observant yet. Because it says over there in Deuteronomy, you should write these sentences down. In chapter, uh, uh, again, <clears throat> in chapter uh, 29, verse 28. Chapter 29, verse 28. Over there it says that I, God, will take care of the hidden transgressions amongst your people. But you are responsible for the transgressions that are public, publicly trans, transmitted or uh, transgressed. You are responsible for those transgressions. You are to address them. And that's what we're doing. God help us in uh, having mercy on us and, and give us more time so that can, we can reach out and tell our brothers the, uh, the important uh, of, of keeping uh, the commandments. You know, I wanted to just go on, on a little tangent in that uh, we started a new, um, a new type of uh, a program uh, which is on, on YouTube uh, and it's basically it's, uh, Yeshiva, Yeshiva Classroom YouTube. Again, Yeshiva Classroom YouTube, and on there you can find two, approximately two minutes of Torah thoughts. Two minutes of Torah thoughts, because you know no one wants to get involved in uh, long uh, speeches uh, that uh, you know are, are difficult to comprehend. And that's one uh, place, and also also uh, on uh, YouTube. If you type in a uh, three-minute Torah lesson on Yeshiva class, three-minute Torah lesson on Yeshiva class on YouTube, Yeshiva class on YouTube, three-minute Torah lesson, Yeshiva class on YouTube, and this one is uh, Yeshiva classroom on YouTube. So. Those are important um, notes that uh, if you like them, uh, put it on your Facebook account and, uh, or tell uh, people about uh, the uh, beauty uh, of, of these uh, thoughts. And uh, two minute Torah thoughts, there it is, uh, log on YouTube. Yeshiva Classroom, Yeshiva Classroom, Yeshiva Classroom YouTube. Okay. Now, that brings us to adult education. Now, it, you know, I don't want to, uh, so you know, and I also want to speak about the uh, is, Israeli elections. Uh, this, this program is being pre-recorded pre -recorded on uh, February, uh, I think it's the 26th. On, on Monday, and I, I want to I speak a little bit about that, but first I want to speak about adult education. Some of the uh, thoughts that uh, I present to you uh, can be gleaned, taught uh, from uh, the works of Rabbi Miller, Jekyll Sali Bracha. An American rabbi who translated everything in English from his teachings in the Slobotka uh, Yeshiva in Poland, which is a suburb of Kovna, which is a suburb of Kovna. And they learned there before World War II, he having escaped just prior to the Holocaust. And that Yeshiva received their teachings uh, from. Pass, having, having been passed down from Sinai all the way to uh, Mediterranean countries, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, and then, then to um, Slovakia, and now to America. So uh, he has written many books uh, based on his 
his teachings from the Slovakia Yeshiva. Uh, Slovakia is a, a suburb of Kovna. And one thing he notes on there, there was a, uh, on Saturday, the Shabbos, there was uh, buses that left from Kovna, uh, from uh, Slovakia to Kovna uh, once every hour with uh, workers uh, doing uh, work on the Sabbath, God forbid. But in later years, after a few years, the buses pulled out every 10 minutes full of uh, people, Jews, uh, Slovakia being a, a Jewish suburb, uh, going to Kovna to, to do work. So here, we're breaking the Sabbath, and that's so important, it's such an important concept that it, it needs to be spoken about, spoken about all the time, because you know, in uh, Exodus, uh, the uh, building of the portable temple uh, in detail was learned from chapter 25 in Exodus, right, from 25 uh, all the way uh, to 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and 31 all speaking about the portable Mishkan, about the portable temple that was constructed where uh, God's essence would, uh, would dwell. You know, we take the Ark back into the Torah uh, on Saturday, on Shabbos, or any day we take out uh, uh, the Torah on Monday and Thursdays when we read it in the synagogue. Uh, we uh, always say uh, that God should uh, return uh, to his resting place above the ark, Renucha Yomar, and we hope God's essence will return, which housed the place above the ark of the portable temple when it traveled for uh, 40 um, for 40 40 years in the in the desert for 40 years it traveled and there there was like 42 stops and every every time it uh, the uh, the order was given to move they packed up the uh, the Aaron the ark containing the uh, only physical object that was ever given to man, to the Jewish people, the two tablets, and also uh, the original uh, scroll of the five books of Moses, which was transmitted uh, to uh, Moses by God, who wrote, who Moses wrote them down, chapter 31 in Deuteronomy, uh, verse 24. So uh, those uh, uh, those uh, occupied the ark, and they were only uh, open to the the high priest, the chief priest, uh, once a year on Yom Kippur when he entered that area of the Holy of Holies, and there is a whole service that happens. Uh, during that time can be learned in the Talmud. Yeah, so we're, we're getting tangential on that. Uh, the fact is that uh, adult education is a dismal failure. As much as they want to send out their, their broken uh, brochures uh, with all the color and, and uh, uh, biographies of, of all the accomplishments that the speaker is going to uh, um, accomplished uh, during his lifetime and now he's going to speak to you uh, it, it's it's it doesn't cut it, it doesn't cut it because that's not the way we learn Torah and I propose and every one of you out there if you have a better plan you propose it to your to your to your rabbi and that and that is uh, that first of all, the onus of work should be on, on the congregant, and everyone should have uh, a 36 minute uh, learning session with himself. 
during the day. In other words, when he's traveling or waiting for the subway or coffee break. Review. That's what Micha said, the prophet Micha, one of the 24 written books of the Bible. That do kindliness, love justice, and walk humbly with God. Meaning you to, to learn. To learn learn Torah. Whatever you, re, you did during the day, review it. Don't waste time. Accumulate marks. And we don't want the, the, uh, the smiles of, of the rabbis telling us, yeah, you're great, you know, we're doing how kind of programs here, and we have sessions, we have, in the summertime, we have speakers, and blah, blah, blah. We don't need that. We don't need that. We need a program where the people should, should work. And specifically, uh, when it comes to Shabbos, we don't need any sermons. We have to, uh, everyone has got to review. Let the rabbi write the sermon on a piece of paper. We don't need the announcements. The announcements are on a brochure, on a bulletin. We say, yeah, that's how it is. We need like a base of medrash that should be open all day long. What is a base of medrash? It's a study hall where you have a mashkiach or someone in charge who knows all the Talmud, uh, all the um, Meforshim, all the teachings, all the Chumash, all the Rashi. He knows everything. And if he gets stuck at something, if you, if you, hopefully you can do it with a, a partner, if you, if you get stuck with, a, uh, with a, a, a phrase or a meaning, go to the rabbi, go to the mashkiach. That's what we need. We don't need gymnasiums. We don't need gymnasiums. We need uh, based on midrashim, study halls where people can work and study and advance and grow. Now you say, well, that's a good idea. You really should do it. That sounds good. But it's, it's up to you, 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 and you. And those orthodox, whatever that means, those committed to keeping the Sabbath, you know who you are. You have to go out there and, 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 and form a, a group and tell, and tell them, the, your so-called leadership, that this is what we want. Or you want something different. But we don't want sermons uh, being let off with jokes. We don't need jokes. We need people working hard to accomplish uh, uh, and, and grow in, in the knowledge of Torah and the excellence in doing, um, doing good deeds. And how, the best deed that you can do is, is to learn. So because by learning, you'll be able to do. So that's so much for that. Uh, well, it's really never enough, but um, where, where can we go from here? We might talk about the Israeli elections, you know. You know, Jews win the wars and uh, they still have uh, problems with uh, uh, the terrorists, the murderers, uh, who constantly uh, harangue and, and perpetuate uh, killings. Uh, this is in February, they already did 250 violent acts of murder uh, and wounding uh, since the beginning of the year. And, and there's no death penalty. And what do they do? They get a, uh, a, a life of a martyr if they're killed. Uh, many of them aren't killed. Uh, we can't uh, let them die. And they go into prison. We have to feed them three meals a day. I mean, uh, did, did the Nazis do anything like that to their people? Or any civilized country? That they don't have a death sentence? Is it not ridiculous that, that they should go on trial? There's no death sentence, and who, uh, and, and, well, listen, can they explain it? Which party goes out and does things like that? Well, well there seems to be uh, a nationalistic party, uh, Rabbi Kahani's um, um, followers, uh, Ben Gavir, uh, and uh, they uh, 
had to join Jewish Home, uh, which is a combination of National Union and and, uh, and Mizrahi, and, and it's it's not the greatest union, I would say. But anyway, the the, uh, the uh, Ultimate uh, Yehuda, uh, Jewish power is in that uh, uh, brokerage, in that uh, 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 broker uh, union, so three party. They wouldn't let uh, Yishai's party, Yachad, come in. But now the polls show that if they didn't join up these two, Ultimate Yehudas and Jewish Home, they would barely make the threshold. In other words, you need like 3.25 percent of uh, total vote to gain four seats. Under that, you're going to lose all those votes uh, carry that, that voted for you. And, and Zehut, uh, which is led by Fagnet, he won't join anybody, and he just wastes his votes. Okay, so what's going to happen? Uh, this is my prediction that. Uh, and that, you know, Trump is ready to come in and, and start cutting up the land, and, and that's the worst thing you want to see because uh, cutting up the land that was God given is a transgression. And, and we see what happened when they gave up part of Gaza. That's where they're shooting the rockets and doing everything. But they wanted to give it away, and now, now they want to do the same thing with, with Judea and Samaria. Right? Should they in Samaria? They lost the wars and they're going to dictate, they're going to get part of the land and they're going to have a nation. Ridiculous. They belong in Transjordan. They have 22 Arab countries where they don't allow a single Jew to live. And you're going to tell me that, that Israel should, even though they won the war, give them part of God-given lands? Yeah, so who's for that? Now, well, you only have... Uh, one that double talks and says that he's for it, and uh, you know, Bennett uh, is 100 percent for the one-state solution, and and and, and Shachat, uh, his partner is is together with that party. And at, at this time, of February 25th, uh, 19, uh, they they're about uh, they have about nine seats uh, in the polls, and uh, the uh, other. Uh, a Jewish home has eight seats, thanks to Ben Gavir. So, I'm going to predict that Bennett is going, Bennett and Shachat is going to to gain a majority of seats, 26, and uh, Netanyahu will get 25, and Gantz will get 25. With that 26, he'll be able to form a right-wing government with. Uh, uh, the religious parties of Aguda and Shas and Jewish Home and even bring in, ben, uh, bring in, bring in Netanyahu. Yeah, so that's my prediction that Bennett will, will win. And you know, in Israel there's 30% of the registered, uh, of, of people, registered voters don't even vote. It's over 30%. Now he has, Bennett has as his third in command, is Bennett, Shachat, and the third in command is, is a uh, third on the ticket is a, a f owner of a uh, soccer team, and and I, and I wrote him a note. I don't know if they ever get it, they ever read it, but I basically said that they should have Shachad Ayat Shachad's picture on a posters or handouts, and asking them to please vote for me under a new Jewish right. Uh, with that, I, I believe that he, they will gain uh, many seats. They will gain many seats and will be in a majority. Although I doubt if, at this point anyone is predicting them uh, to beat Netanyahu with all his, uh, uh, you know, types of of dancing around Trump and dividing the land that he might do because he led a rightist government last four years and what did he do i mean he gave away uh, hebron uh, parts of hebron he allowed uh, the gaza strip to be taken away uh, he, he uprooted settlements 
and, and he's called a, a rightist. He, he classifies himself as a right wing. Once they get in, he's no longer going to be a right wing. He's going to be he's going to be a Trump man. He's going to start, start cutting out the out the land. God forbid. Well, that's so much uh, for for that. Uh, what else can we can we speak about? Uh, there are many things that uh, we we can talk about. But you know, when when the Jews uh, went into uh, the uh, land of Sinai in Horev. Horeb is the definition, is the uh, general uh, outside community of uh, uh, of the vicinity of Mount Sinai. So they were they were leaving Mount, they were leaving Egypt, and I tell my granddaughter to read. Chapter 19 in Exodus, and the first 10 sukkim, 10 sentences over there, and it talks about where uh, God said, You saw all the abominations in Egypt, all the evil practices that they did, homosexuality and, and idol worshiping, and you saw how I carried you on. Wings of eagles, on wings of eagles, how I carried you. That's mentioned in the Bible in chapter 19. How he protected them and brought them safely when the ten plagues afflicted the general populace. I carried you on wings of eagles. And he says further, in his first ten uh, sentences, he says over there, if you will keep the commandments and live by them, then I will make you a company of priests, a kingdom of priests, Malachim Kohanim, a kingdom of priests, meaning that everybody can be like a priest. If you keep the commandments and learn Torah, you will be respected and you will be a, a priest. And it goes on to further to tell Moshe to speak about what I promised them. And the people answered, Nasa, we shall do. I don't know, in English it's the first person uh, plural is we will, right? For emphasis, uh, uh, is, it, is it we shall? I don't know. But anyway, Nasa, we shall do. So the question is this. Well, well, how come it says we? Everyone should answer according to his person. It says, I shall do. And the answer is that those that were dependent on the family head would be Uh, would uh, would be uh, taken in under his wing and he would be responsible for all his dependents. He would be responsible for his dependents. So that's what we see when he said, we shall do. And then, and then it says, God, in, in chapter 19, verse 9, God descended in the thickness of a cloud and he spoke to, the, to Moses so that the people will believe forever. So that the people will believe forever. And those were those teachings that, that God heard that we, we have a covenant that we made. And then we went on to, to, to Mount Sinai and we uh, waited there three days. Uh, the uh, people went into a, a mikveh washing even their clothes. The, 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 the word uh, 
mikveh or a, a, a bath is leaded out because it's, it says even their clothes. It's understood they went into the mikveh, but even their clothes they, they, they washed. And this is how a new convert to Judaism, according to Halacha, he's a new person, and he goes into the uh, mikveh, right? There's certain dimensions of uh, the body of water, what is considered a, a mikveh, and then uh, the male is, is circumcised after uh, uh, first he's circumcised, and then after he heals, he um, he goes into the mikveh. But if he already circumcised or uh, already an older person, uh, other uh, letting of blood uh, can uh, be performed, and, and then you say that I do want to become one and parcel, part and parcel of the Jewish people, and you accept it. So there's a lot of, of Gentiles that uh, they come over, see the light, and see the real truth. And even, even amongst uh, our uh, people, uh, you know, and, uh, and, you know, I was reading on, on you know, Tanakh is something that, that should not be uh, uh, put into a uh, back a back room, but it should be studied also. And and you know, uh, we're studying uh, the uh, the Book of Kings, uh, where um, you have Isaiah administering to uh, the kings, begin, beginning with uh, Azariah, and, and then Yosem, and Ahaz, and, and Hiskiyahu, and Menashe, and Ammon. And then he was assassinated, uh, and uh, that was the end of his rulership, uh, or administration. He wasn't a ruler, but he was an advisor. He didn't make up new laws. The prophet doesn't come along and say, uh, we're going to have new laws. No, he is the person who uh, gives instruction and chizuk and strength and encouragement to those already uh, on the books. And uh, he was uh, he was asked uh, once Jerusalem uh, was uh, put on the siege, and uh, Hiskiah was the king, and they, asked the, um, and they asked the prophet Isaiah, what, what will become of, uh, come of us, where uh, Sanchev had, uh, and it's the Assyrian king had an army all, all around the, the, uh, uh, the city, and um, Rav Shaka, well, a spokesman for Sanchev, spoke a Jew, a convert, an apostate, Right? He spoke in Hebrew to the people and he said, Surrender and I will bring you to a land of uh, flowing with greens and, 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 and all good foods, to a uh, flowing land that you'll be happy with. Just open up the gates. And, and uh, that's what Rav Shaka uh, spoke to the, to the people. And the people said, uh, the leaders uh, said, Do not speak to us in Hebrew because you are lowering the morale of the people. So Rav Shaka said, I don't care what the morale is, they're probably weak anyway. And, and, and he continued speaking in Hebrew. But Isaiah said, Isaiah said that he will be called away, and he was called away, his troops were called away to Ethiopia. But he said, Rav Shaka said, it will be back soon. He, was, he came back, but there was a mutiny or some kind of a uh, of a uh, civil disobedience among the troops, and, and they all fled. And sure enough, there were no enemy. And the next day, that the prophet Isaiah predicted, and Hiskiyahu, the Gentiles call him Hezekiah, and what that comes. But Hiskiyahu was a righteous person, and he listened, and he spread Torah, and Torah was was throughout the land. Uh, everything everything uh, flourished, and it was good for the people. 
and, and for uh, for the economy and for the country. So again, I want to I want to tell you that uh, hook on to these uh, Torah thoughts, uh, Torah lessons. There's one at this site, right, right. Three minute Torah lesson, yeshiva class on YouTube. Write it down, right. And here is the is the other one. Uh, that we have, uh, it's, it's called uh, Yeshiva Classroom on YouTube and it'll be two minutes, approximately two minutes of a Torah thought, right? Yeshiva Classroom on YouTube. Well, we covered uh, a lot of things today and uh, hopefully that you'll be able to review these um, these uh, thoughts and look up the sources, not that they just came out of thin air. So that those things are important. Uh, the other thing is, um, was I going to say uh, that we spoke about Isaiah, and then we have the prophet Jeremiah, right? He uh, also was a righteous individual and encouraging people to follow the Torah and its teachings and he said to the king Sidkiyahu, who was the last king of uh, Judah, right, the country of Judah, he was the last king of Judah uh, before the Babylonians came and he, and he told the people we have to surrender, uh, we uh, have transgressed and and, and God uh, wants us to go into exile and people didn't want to listen to him and they threw him in the jail and uh, sure enough uh, they entered the temple and they burnt it down on a ninth of all a sad day in our history. So they let Yirmiyahu out and uh, he accompanied the people back to Babylonia. They were in, in a crying and a, a tearful mood and then he came back to um, Jeremiah came back to uh, Yerushalayim and the Babylonians had left a, a small garrison there and they left a, a Jew, Gedaliah, in charge. And Gedaliah was murdered by the Jews and they wiped out that Babylonian garrison. And then they, they, they feel, felt they did wrong and as a result they said, we better run away, and they ran to Egypt, and they took Jeremiah with them, with them and he died somewhere on, on the way to Egypt. And that was the story of Jeremiah, and um, that was the prophet that uh, lived uh, during the uh, reign of uh, Sidkiyahu, uh, the last uh, of the Jewish kings of uh, of of the kingdom of Judah because uh, the country uh, was split uh, in the time of uh, Solomon's son Rehovam, right? Solomon's son Rehovam and uh, Yeruvam ben Nevat was the one who was a righteous person but he, he felt that they were doing very harsh decrees on the average person and, and, and he didn't want them to be enslaved uh, and they wanted a freedom as, as uh, different uh, than uh, Solomon, his predecessor, and, and they broke away and formed an own, own, an own kingdom uh, called the uh, Kingdom of Israel. So he had two kingdoms, Kingdom of Israel, which is ten tribes, and the Kingdom of Judah, uh, which is two and a half tribes. And the, many people uh, did not follow Yeruvah ben Nevat and they returned from the other tribes to the kingdom of Judah. But eventually, in the sixth year of Hiskiyahu, the king of, of Judah, reign, uh, 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 Shalmanazar came and exiled the ten tribes. And they are called uh, the, last, uh, the lost ten tribes of Israel. So, you know, it's, it's good to read these books uh, of the Tanakh and also to read 
uh, books by Rabbi Miller because he gives ideology, basic ideology, basic thoughts, and he gives the uh, source, the source material of uh, of uh, source material of, of where these thoughts are derived from. And just in conclusion, uh, Hillel, who is not, he's not called Rabbi Hillel, but he's called Hillel because we all know just like Einstein, we don't call him Dr. Einstein, but Hillel uh, spoke many words and among those words were that if I am not for myself, who will be for me? If I'm only for myself, what am I? And if not now, when? If not now, when? Means we can't procrastinate and say we're going to get to Torah and learning and mitzvahs later on because we're busy. Because when your time is up, you have to bring all the deeds that you did, you bring it to the next world, you bring it to the soul world. Because uh, the empty hole is not the end. We prepare for our physical retirement, our age retirement, but we, do, we, do we prepare for our eternal retirement? In other words, we put away the stocks and the bonds and the social security and we leave a budget, but is that, is that, the, is that really uh, the retirement we're looking for? We're looking for retirement in the eternal uh, retirement, which is eternal. So with that, I'm going to end and uh, wish you all a very good day and uh, the best of everything.